do you do to all you hill giants? Blunder into the stinky dragon, sip on our latest libation, join the great club. Mmm, some mixture of mashed milk, clobbered cocoa, smashed sugar, brewed forced espresso, whacked cream topped with freshly ground up game. One gulp of this gargantuan grog hits harder than getting clocked with a rock. Previously, our adventurers had a heart-to-heart -heart with the headless horsemen puttered into the city of Parrish. There they found themselves in the fray with an unfriendly frost giant. After freeing a captive from their frosty foe, they traipsed into the tomb tavern and came across an incorporeal carcassucan, the mummy. Prepare yourself a potation and let's proceed with this pungent pot boiler. First try. Hello, everyone. I'm a professional. My name is Gustavo Ferrola, <laughs> dungeon master of our putrid party. I'm going to hit our four players with an arrow. Ah! <laughs> this week's role play and warm up question is. Is there a type of monster your character would fight no matter what? Oh, I can do that. Uh, could you? Right, well, <laughs> I can do that. Introduce yourself and answer the question. <laughs> I'm Chris Damaris, and I play Barney Farney. And I w would fight no matter what is the undead. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 very uh, nice. I guess as a cleric that tracks. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh, Barney, all all the undead. Uh, all of them? Every single type of undead that there is? The ones that, that feed upon the living. Uh-huh. Mm. Uh-huh. And, yeah. eat, <laughs> and, and, and kill the living. It's getting hot in here, right? Uh, <laughs> I was feeling a little uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Barton, what's that outside the window? <laughs> it's crazy distraction for you. It looks like just the, the outside the window with the sky. Is Barney going to have a turn like in uh, what we do in the shadows where we find out he's like actually a descendant of like the Van Helsing family <laughs> or something? I, maybe. <laughs> well, uh, what about you, Elgon? <laughs> uh, hello. Uh, I'm Barbara Dunkelman and I play Elga Von Brath, the half-elf vampire barbarian. And uh, you know what type of monster would Elga always fight? Yeah, no matter what. No matter what, every single one of them goes down. Oh. Okay. Elga has, is, makes no exception for anything trying to do evil or harm to her or her friends. So you better watch out. Better not cry. You better find out. Oh, she's telling you why. What about a monster <laughs> that's, not, that's not, not harming any of your friends? Like a, an innocent monster walking no, down the street. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. Well, let me, let me retcon my answer. <laughs> <laughs> Any 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 monster that wants to harm har cause harm to me or uh, my friends, mm. the innocent ones. I have my eye on you. <laughs> hey, if it's not causing harm, it's not a monster. There you go. Well, in D and D lore, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. what, what about a monster that's just like doing their job? It's just like a nine to five for them. They're not into it. They just clock in, do their monstering, and clock out. I've seen that. <laughs> well, uh, also, if they're like, incorporated, is the the head of the. Peace treaties, like all those people, they're all monsters, right? Technically, we've called them monsters. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, some of them are okay. I mean, it's yeah. kind of like a you know, monsters and this have to be a negatory word in this world. You yeah. know, they've reclaimed it. Yeah, there's different kinds of monsters. Yeah. Oh, Blaine Gibson here. Uh, yeah, another play, type of monster. You know, <laughs> playing Chip Haney, it's a level six tiefling rogue. You know the kind of monster that I'd fight no matter what. I'd throw hands. I'd throw daggers. Kidnappers. The Kidnappers. worst monster of all. Mm. You get your hands off those kids, this monster, or I'll stab your hands. <laughs> I took off my headphones while Blaine was yelling into the mic, and it was somehow louder. <laughs> <laughs> my headphones on. The microphone, the, the headphones were protecting your yeah. ears. But it's, it's not just, like, children, because you said get your hands off those kids. You're like, anyone who abscons with any person. Yeah, you know, like, right? a, yeah. like a wife. Right. Or something. <laughs> wife nappers. I don't like them. What yeah. if Carol kidnapped herself? Then, uh, <laughs> uh just, can you do that? <laughs> <laughs> you just broke Chip. Uh, Chip does uh, scream like he, he uh big fan of watching all the Taken films. Yeah. Have you ever seen Gun Girl? Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. that's how you kidnap yourself, yeah. Spoiler. <laughs> yeah, right. but like, like right. a, right. Got a, a it. ten year old movie it's at this ten point. Years old. Eh, it's it's uh, you know, whatever. Uh bonjour. 
my name is John Reisner, and I play Mati Confucius, who's an Eric Cochran ghost monk. Um, and uh, uh, monsters that I would uh, fight no matter what would be any monster who would... Uh, actually, there was a, a monster I almost thought I had to fight, but I just misheard Ooh. the name of its thing. You called it Zamuld, and I thought it was mold. And, oh. and that's the worst thing for a bakery. Oh. Oh, uh, yeah. That's just... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you got to call the fire inspection company. <laughs> Is that oh. how you deal with mold? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Burn the place down. <laughs> um, but as far as monsters that I would fight no matter what, I uh, would fight, um, I guess I'm a little bit like you, Elgas, but it would be any monsters that would fight my cat. Oh. Um, anything mm. that would I uh, want to eat a kitty um, or anything like that. The uh, gray ginger. Yes, yeah, uh, my my uh, amorphously chromatically colored. Can we talk uh, about the the just the peel behind know, the curtain? There. I don't know what you're talking about. My cat has always been ginger or gray. Orange. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's it's he's you know as as um I've I know some people like to change the color of their hair you know and and you know Jacques is wont to do that on occasion. <laughs> It was dark when we found him. It was dark. Yeah. So everything looks black and white. Yeah, yeah, yeah dark vision. You, you can't make out. It's, soot in a sewer? It's grotesque. It's spooky. There's fires. You it's know, a they dry come, sewer. You know those hobo barrels where they got the fire coming out of the barrel? And he's just, he's a one of those cats and a harmonica was playing in the background. <laughs> you know, like a Tom and Jerry cartoon. <laughs> Wait, were Tom and Jerry homeless in the cartoons you watched? I'm sure at some point he was. <laughs> no, but there was a group of angry cats. I remember that. There was like mean Tom cats. Yeah. I kind of want to look it up. I think you, you guys get more mad like whenever I get on my phone. I thought you were talking about episode five of Stinky Dragon Adventures. I'm talking about angry cats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Which, which, in which there were cameos from every cat. We had a lot of cats in there, including Jacques. Yeah. Jacques was one of the cats. What yeah. else did we have in there? We just well, had like had, every cat, cat ever cat made. Mud. Oh, oh, yeah. And, and we made like, Jacques and then some uh, other cats. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I know there's multiple cats. Cat heavy episodes. Yeah. Jock was very heavily He's there. Featured, He's yeah. there as 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 he should be. Jock. Yeah, that's uh that I guess by the time this comes out that'll have been out for a little while. Yeah. But speaking of other things that we're working on, we have yeah. uh, something big coming up here real soon. Yes. Uh if you guys would allow me a moment to just uh, address uh y'all uh, listening right now. I'm <laughs> yes. talking to you uh uh Steve. <laughs> um <laughs> uh it's when this episode comes out, 2023 is coming to a close. We're getting to the end of the year and we've had an awesome year, in my opinion, an amazing, magical, fun, and positive year with Tales of Sneaky Dragon. So thankful to you, the audience, for doing uh, everything you guys have done to listen to and support the show. A lot of people don't know about like where this show came from necessarily. It was just uh, I got a bug in my head of like, what if we create a D&D show back in 2019? I think that came from I love D&D shows and I'm surrounded by creative powerhouses here that I was like well if I can just get them all to sit around the table oh thank you I'm sure we can make amazing stuff really quick it sounds like the show's shutting down it's not it's not no, it's, it's exciting not. news it's not I can be reflective and not be uh, closing it me. out you're scaring me <laughs> maybe that's good maybe I'll keep listening if they're worried <laughs> no it was just you know I want to like point out that like it was something that we pulled together and uh, made it through the pandemic with doing this show remotely. We got to be able to do it together um, through, we garnered a pretty core uh, and adamant, but you know, small audience at first, but then through the power of puppetry and animation and all that kind of stuff, we were able to grow this show to be so full of amazing people we ourselves that make the show we're fans of the shows ourselves we're listeners ourselves i think that speaks to how much uh, i'm a big stinky yeah i'm a, I'm I'm a big stinkiest. stinker um and that kind of thing and so since the year is coming to a close and that's the point where you get reflective on the next year and the next year is gonna have more stinky dragon blaine gibson oh that's right we wanted to uh start off the year on a high note um and so basically the show is completely supported by our audience that is where how we make the show that's how we're able to run the show especially it is, you steve especially you <laughs> steve <laughs> steve 
put that put that cookie down. You've had enough. You're, you're going to get crumbs all over your favorite red shirt. <laughs> I get, hope. Let's get as specific oh as possible. <laughs> let's see if we can find Steve in Minnesota with a red shirt and a cookie. We are starting off the year on a high note, and we're gonna we're we're starting a new tradition. This is a new tradition. Mm. Um, our first annual uh, event of this inaugural. Uh, uh, no, first annual. Nope. Uh, <laughs> uh, the first month of next year, we are officially deeming stinkuary. You. And guys, we talked to President Biden. He said it was cool. He signed into law. <laughs> yeah. January is now stinkuary. It's going to be an official month-long holiday. Um, we're going to spend all next month raising support for the show, raising community members, and uh, specifically uh, raising support to get more patrons for our show so that we can grow the show to be able to do even more amazing projects. Um, those patrons, we call them our first members. And you can become a first member by going to our website at stinkydragonpod.com. And those are the people that directly support us with a month monthly subscription fee um, that's only six dollars a month but with that money we're able to do everything you see and hear with the show you're able to for the low low price of six dollars a month you could feed a chris damaris yeah <laughs> you can yeah. this baby chris this yeah. lonely well another thing to break the, the the fourth wall this show it's it's expensive uh it's a lot of, a lot of people put a lot of work into it oh, and yeah. Um, yeah we we want to keep making it and that's only possible through the yeah. support of people. It's, it's like hard you. out there for professional D&D players nowadays. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to spend the whole month asking for you guys' support, asking for you guys to uh, join us on our website, become patrons. Um, but we're going to be, uh, as we raise support, we have projects that we're going to release. We have projects we're going to announce. We have even products that we want to announce. And we're going to have more details on that specificity about that um, in the coming days. You can make sure to keep track of all that information of what milestones we're going to be unlocking, where you guys can be, uh, you know, buying this stuff on our socials, Stinky Dragon Pod on all the socials. You can join us on our Discord. Our Discord is so fun. People are on there constantly um, talking about the show, sharing. And where they're hanging out. Yeah, the uh, fan art's on there, all that kind of stuff. So, yes, next month is Stinkuary. All month long, we're going to be uh, uh, raising support for the show, and we hope that you will join us in that effort. I also want to point out, too, something we don't talk about much is being a first member gets you this podcast ad free. It does. But you don't have to watch it or listen to it on our website to get it ad free. You also get access to an RSS feed on whatever podcast yeah, you platform you use. Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And that'll give you access to this podcast also ad free. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and and second wind. I, yeah, yeah. It really? gets it gets you know that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's been like that for like two or three years, know, dude. Every, everyone in this company talks about RSS feed. What is RSS feed? <laughs> I don't know. You get, a spe- you get a special link once you're a first member. You click on it, and then you can import that into whatever you listen to. Like, it it, 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 it walks you through it. So, like, Spotify or Apple Podcasts podcast. or whatever. Yeah, I know And you get the, yeah. the ad-free episodes of the uh, The RSS the feed podcast. is what you subscribe to in order to get the episodes of any podcast uh-huh. you listen to. It is just a feed. It's great. I'm glad we're explaining this yeah. because people listening might not know why. Yeah, either. some the yeah, listeners who don't know. <laughs> thank you for being a surrogate for the audience, Blaine. <laughs> yeah, I, that's why I did it. That's why you did it, yeah. <laughs> He's just pretending. He knew. Yes, yes. There's there's awesome perks from becoming a first member, but I consider the best perk is that you get to have the badge that you're an official stinky member who is supporting the show. See, well, um, Chris is now Blaine. showing Blaine on his phone. So <laughs> see how see how on my uh, yeah. podcast it's app, premium. There's Tales from Stinky Dragon, and then there's also a premium Tales from Stinky no Dragon. No ads on that one. That one doesn't have ads. No, no d- yeah. direct and so ads. It's like a separate. Who's thing. in that show? <laughs> and, and it's and, and then it also you also get like second wind oh. within yeah. that. So on the RSS. So, oh. So it's it's in it's on the normal you can do it on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. Yeah. What's a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> What's a podcast? Let's do an actual podcast. Let's Thank you for letting me talk about that yeah. for far too long. I appreciate no, it. No, it's, it's important. It's, and it's important. You know, and I appreciate you guys we, giving me the time to do we it. Get the gonna, word out there. We're gonna be talking about it the rest of this month and all of uh Stinkuary. You all climb in, and inside is a frigid stone-walled watering hole filled with spirits drinking gaseous spirits. The horseman and the young lady find a small private table by themselves in the corner, but something else catches your eye, or rather someone. Someone floating at the bar calls out, Hey, barkeep, pour me another. I swear I'm good for it. Even though she's floating above the ground, she still manages to stumble in the air while reaching for the glass of gas. She turns her decaying face to see if anyone noticed, and her hair hisses at the four of you. Oh. It's the mummy. Oh. I can't believe it. She's drinking? <laughs> <laughs> My mummy? Uh, 
What? What's What's up? Oh, how are you doing? <laughs> I know. I want Barney to say what's up. <laughs> what's Where's up? your mother? <laughs> So, uh, Barney, do you? I mean, I'm just curious. Do you it walk? seems like you're. Oh yes, yeah, approaching. Yeah, approaching to say hi. Mm. Oh, I approach with Barney as well. Yeah, I as well. Mati too, or no? Mati leaves the tavern and goes and checks out the rest of the city <laughs> and wants to see Parrish. Uh, uh, no, I follow. Okay. If you, I don't know if you remember, yeah, I think this was a detail in the last episode that John, I think you really liked, was that there were no doors uh, on the tavern. Oh, uh, yes, I love that. Through the window. Mati just passes through walls constantly, back and forth, <laughs> just going around, just pulling a full shadow cat everywhere. I, I'm sorry, Chris, I, I kind of derailed us there. What was the question you asked? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Hmm. You look familiar. Mommy, do you not remember us? We tried to save you. And failed. <laughs> Leave that part out. I think she knows. Yeah. I vaguely remember. It all seems so fuzzy. So long ago. Well, it, what, it, oh, uh, a couple, a week? <laughs> oh, you know me, right? And she points at you, Barney. Yes, I do. Something's been bothering me. Maybe you can help me. What? What's my name? M M Mommy. Uh, your name? <laughs> Do you want me to tell oh, you? Wait, wait, wait. I probably have this. It's been bothering me. It's on the tip of my snakes. Is this happens? He's trying. Let him have it. Let him try. Right, uh, Rashad. Yeah, that's it. That's right, yes. That's it. I remember now. She seems to, like, kind of sober up and come to. Give yourself an inspiration die if you don't have one. <laughs> oh, I had one, but... Yes, <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> That's right. Rida Rajad. Oh, no, I can see this game now. <laughs> <laughs> I came back for revenge. Yes. Wait, you did? Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, In improv, it's always yes and. With Barney, it's yes what? Yes what? <laughs> yes wait. Well, it's because he says yes before he realizes he even should. That's full commitment. Revenge against Eddie. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Yes. Yes, I need to restore balance to... What was that land called? The Force? <laughs> <laughs> Carcassouk? Uh, antique? Yeah, Carcassouk. That's right. Can you help me? We're friends, right? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah! Yes! Barney. Yes? Yeah. I remember. Kind of. That's okay. You need to tell me out of all four of us, you remember Barney. <laughs> And she looks at you and goes, Well, it's just, he's been talking to me. You are Elga. You know what? This close now. <laughs> Elga. Yeah! Oh, yes. Elga. How could I forget? And Chip. And Matid. Yeah. You seem to struggle a lot less. <laughs> <laughs> and your beautiful gray cat. Jack. It's sometimes great. Yes, that's why it's a bit dim in if here right now. If the light catches it right, it yeah. looks orange. It kind of shimmers in the light a little. <laughs> We're trying to get you your headdress. <laughs> Just like looking at Chris. He's looking at his notes. <laughs> <laughs> right. What's the name of that headdress again? A uh, headdress of antique. Antique. Ant antique. Ah, oh, yes. That's it. You have been listening. All of a sudden, we all look down, and there's buzzers in front of us. With the, with uh -huh. the, our hands are hovering over. <laughs> I'd like to phone a friend. Could, could I? Could I like lean over to the bar? Keep and say like how, how many how many is this this one had? Well, your timing's actually impeccable. I was about to say that the, at this point the bar keeps leaning forward to hand her her drink that she was asking for, uh -huh. and uh, he says, "Oh, she's been here quite a while. I I don't know. She was here when my shift started, so I don't know how many she got before I got when here." When did your shift start? My shift uh, started about an hour and a half ago. Barkeep, I'll take a warm milk. Warm milk. On the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> There's oh. an inspiration die. That's, that's great. That's great. I love it. Thank you. Oh. I challenge anybody listening to this podcast to say that at any bar warm. and to report back on what warm happened. I'll take a warm milk on the rocks. On the rocks. <laughs> Just tell me so what the barkeep does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the barkeep actually points at a tombstone-shaped menu suspended in midair hanging over the stone slab bar. That's fun. And says, well, here are the specials if you're interested. Oh. Well, uh, Can you read them to us? Curses. <laughs> Micah wrote a bunch of long French names. Yeah. <laughs> has, I get, I get has, to try to say. I'm excited. I'm excited. You created this. Here we go. 
Retrouve. Hmm. Retrouve-moi à uh, Michemin. Retrouvez-moi. Uh, what? A uh, Michemin. Michemin. Okay. That's, yeah, that's exactly what I said. Okay. Gus is about to summon some what is it? undead demon. Or alternatively, Juice Dunfaz. Juice Dunfaz? Unfaz. Un, juice Unfaz. Mm-hmm. Faz. Faz? Okay. Yeah. Like a Z? Yeah. Oh. Bean juice. Bean juice? I don't know. <laughs> Incorrect. Mm. Everyone make me wisdom checks. Oh. No, this episode. Well, you're the one reading them to us. Sponsored by Duolingo. <laughs> I won. Juice and fa. 18. Faz. 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 18. Uh, did you roll my teeth? No, because I didn't have my app open. Well, you, you, you would know anyway, actually. Yeah, what would I... I, I speak this language. What is it? Matid knows, and Elga and Chip, you two have probably spent enough time around Matid to, uh, to pick up a little bit as well. The butchered first drink, courtesy of uh, yours truly, translates to meet me halfway. Oh. And the second one is just a phase. Oh. Faz is not a French word. What is in these drinks? I'm not I'm not familiar with these uh, these names of, of beverages. Rapt explains that the... Uh, That's the name of the barkeep? Yeah. He's got a little uh, name tag on. Oh, okay. Oh. Rapt. Is that with a W or an R? <laughs> it's R-A-P-T. Rapt? Rapt. Like Rapt. raptor. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> or ah. or getting someone's attention. That's a real word? Like, yeah, like in, in rapture. Oh, oh. I'm is this, saying Raptor. Is this last name <laughs> RSS feed? He's going to do that thing where he learned a new word and so he's just going to use his office. Oh, yeah, yeah, the <laughs> RSS feed. <laughs> uh, All right, so we've got two drinks to pick from. So, the you know, there's some example, like, photos. Not, not photos, but, you know, there's images of the drinks up on the menu as well. Yeah. And the first one, the glass looks half empty or half full. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the bottom half is empty. Uh, but the top half is filled with purple Ooh. fumes that uh, smell of butterscotch and mountain air. Ooh, I like this. You know you're in a fancy joint when they got pictures of the <laughs> items. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Listed up on the Are wall. Are you saying that it's the opposite, in fact, like a TGI Friday's menu? <laughs> no, I proposed to Carol in an establishment <laughs> like this. <laughs> Chilies. Well, that's the it? other one. That's, <laughs> that's the meet me halfway. Yeah, the second one is a, a murky green mist that gives off notes of sage and cheap aftershave. So these are all, mm. there's, they're not actually liquid. Right. They're, they're gaseous. They're gaseous for, uh, their, for the ghostly patrons. One of those new, like, new cocktail experiences yeah. where you inhale the vodka. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. I would like, a, I was like, I would like to try one of these cocktails. Uh, I'd like the uh, Jus from Faz. Coming right up, Rapt gets to work putting together various gases and aromas into a drink and uh, hands it to you. That'll be two silver. Oh, yeah. You have to pay for stuff. I hand over uh, three silver. Ooh. Oh. No, two. We're in France. Oh. Oh. <laughs> no need to tip. No, you're in Paris. You're in Paris. They're in Paris. Can I order a water there, Rapt? Mm. Listen, I'll, I'll, I'll meet you in the middle, and I'll pay for the mummy's tab as well. Ooh. Oh. Okay. I guess Raps is going to have to figure out how many drinks the mummy's had. I'll take one of the others, I guess, with my warm milk, with on ice. I think Raps should make sure that you know which one you're ordering and maybe say again what the drink is called. What was the first one? Do you remember it all? Oh. <laughs> I don't. I don't. To be fair, I don't remember it at all. Retouma Ami Shemin. Ami And what did it mean again? Meet me halfway. I like how Barbara said that and then <laughs> turned around and gave me a sideways <laughs> glance. <laughs> Rap guess we're figuring out the mummy's tab, making Barney a drink. You wanted the the meet me halfway? Sure. And yeah. And then a water for our friend Chip over there. And yeah. a warm milk on ice. But I might do something with that water. I want to see... What? Yeah, I want to see if I can slide a hand, switch the water so that oh. the mummy then is hydrating. Oh. Instead I like of drinking this. more alcohol. Interesting. I guess. This is the only situation where slide of hand works in a bar, I will point out. <laughs> oh, I guess you could do your little slide of hand. Okay, so, you know, Rapt has to think for a bit to try to figure out milk, uh, but while he does so... <laughs> Looking, at, looking for cows. Yeah. Humanoid cows. There, uh, there's like, it's all dead in this city. Yeah. He hands you a uh, Retuva Amishamin to Barney. He hands a go. glass of steam to Chip and oh. uh, a, a <laughs> bill for uh, one gold, six silver pieces okay. to uh, Chip. Bleeding money over here. Seven silver. There you, there you go. Okay. You going to resolve his sleight of hand? Yeah, make a sleight of hand check. Let's see how that goes. Okay. Did, uh, did anyone drink these yet? I don't think anyone's said they've drank it yet. Because I want to see what the effects are before. 
I drink. <laughs> Barney suddenly exclaims that he drinks and uh, as you do and downs his drink. Roll me a d20, Barney. Okay. Is this for the milk or the? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the milk has not been resolved. Uh, yeah. Rap has no idea where that's coming uh, from. Twenty-one on sleight of hand. Ooh, that's a three on a, out of a d20. Uh huh. Uh huh. We'll resolve Barney first. Okay. You drink it, and it's it, it's weird because you know normally when we think of drinking liquids, you know, you have a very distinct sensation. You know, it goes down your yeah. throat and into your stomach. But this, yeah. since it's gaseous, and you know this drink in particular, like I said, the bottom half is empty. And it's the top half that has the fumes in it. Mm. It kind of like goes into your mouth and then goes up through your sinuses and oh. kind of comes out through your nose. And you can still taste it, you know. And it does have, you know, it does tastes like it smells it has that butterscotch kind of wow. fresh mountain air feel and you feel really invigorated until you look down and you realize that everything below your waist is now invisible oh my goodness <sighs> is he floating it looks like his the top part of his torso is just floating in midair Marnie, what happens no. when you try to walk around i don't know can you jump maybe you should perhaps try to kick a chip why would i kick a chip <laughs> why would you kick me <laughs> Just want to so, see so, what happens. So, so wait for science. For science. <laughs> I can see the bo- it's it's. I can see the bottom half of my. L- no, no, no. You're at like midsection down. Nothing's. Holy. Yeah. You, you know that it's there because you can feel it and you're standing, but you can't see it. I try. Barney jumps. Yeah. You uh you jump. You give it an old man jump. Okay. Can Matid go to try to see if Barney's legs are still there? <laughs> How are you gonna do that? It's like touch. Oh yeah. Make a. Well, you're not attacking him, but make like a. Like an unarmed strike uh, at disadvantage because you can't see it. You can also make Jacques rub against his legs and then just leave fur. <laughs> I seem to have lost myself in my drink. Mm. <laughs> Is that the first time for you, Barney? Uh, uh, from memory. That's a 20? Oh, at disadvantage because he's invisible. You're at disadvantage. 12. Yeah, you're uh, able to feel his legs. Okay, and his so legs they're there. Are still it's there. just an yeah. illusion. Yeah. Mm, okay. 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 Then, uh, Chip, your sleight of hand, you had a 21? Yes. Yeah, how do you approach that? I mean, that's a, that's a really good roll, but, like, how? What, what is the actual mechanic of you trying to swap the you know, glass you, of steam with the mummy's drink? I guess, drink? you know, when you get, like, a bunch of glasses on the table at a restaurant, oh, let's rearrange the, oh, okay, and then I'm just kind of, like, I move that one over to in front of the mummy, and then I kind of bring this one over to here. Mm. And then I, I... Is it like when you put a ball under a cup and you do the whole... Like, yeah. <laughs> it's just I move the things so much that you kind of lose track, but I know what's where's going what. Yeah, you're able to do that. And, you know, the mummy's distracted by Barney's disappearing bottom half as well. So you're able to get in there and uh, uh, swap her drink out with uh, a nice, refreshing glass of steam. Yeah. Mm. I say, oh, cheers, cheers, yeah, to <laughs> the carcassook. Cheers. Cheers. Hi, cheers. 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 Opa. Ah. What do they say in France? Sante. Sante. Oh, uh, yeah, I've heard of that. It means two health. Okay, yeah. Matisse. Sante. And downs the jus en face. You uh, drink it, and you rolled me a d20 as well. Or à la vôtre. What's that translate to? To the... To the vote. No. no, votre. <laughs> I got to chuckle Vot- out of my two. Uh, two. You drink it, and, you know, like I said with Barney, it's unusual because it's a gas. So, well, you're a ghost, too. So this is actually the perfect kind of drink for you. Yeah, I'm in my town. Yeah, you're in your town. Uh, it's a delicious drink. You've never, in the in the corporeal world, everything's, I don't know, like, it, it, it's not as good. It's not tailored for you. This is perfect. It's the most delicious drink you've had. And... As you drink it, you know, you're already a ghost. You're already incorporeal, but you feel like this drink kind of heightens that effect for you. And everything that you're carrying or wearing falls to the ground. Oh. Including Jacques, who was on your shoulder. Oh, no. He lands on his feet. Yeah, he does. And, uh, yep, you're standing there, Matid, totally naked. I start, uh... Well, I'm I'm an Eric Cochran, so I'm I'm always got I'm always covered in yeah. my feathers. I'm still naked. Birds are naked all the time. The feathers all fall off. <laughs> you, know how, you know how Donald Duck doesn't wear any pants, but when he gets out of the shower, he puts a towel around his waist. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> you ever think about that? Well, um, it's still wet. So it's probably just drying off. Why would he do that? <laughs> Matite starts wildly kicking and punching towards Chip. <laughs> Wait, what? What did I do? I didn't know. Just like I, my yeah. punchy today against Chip. Make a, a an unarmed strike. I'm uh, gonna roll. dodge this. So I want to count. No, this. I thought I'm. I thought I'm all phased. Well, yeah. Make, make the roll anyway. Okay. See, see where this goes. Let's roll the nat 20, 27. Yeah, you. Uh, you know, with your monk reflexes, you lash out a very quick 
punch at Chip, and it goes right through him. Yeah. Oh. Oh, you were a goofing. Yeah, I was goofing. Yeah. <laughs> looked like it would hit you square in the jaw, uh, Chip, but man, it just like phased right through. You looked like you had a lot behind that. Like, you weren't sure that that was going to work out, but you didn't care. Yeah, it's just almost like I could do this at any moment. Yeah, it's like you've been wanting to it's do it. It's like it's right there, ready to be yeah, pulled. It's like that the, was... the bullet is loaded, and yeah, I'm ready to you fire just, you're it. Just, that but that I won't. No. <laughs> I won't, because I like you. Yeah. You said you're a I good like one. I trust you. I yeah. You okay. should trust my me. You so should keep trusting me. You guys need to stop drinking. I'm really sweaty right now. <laughs> Rap says, do you get used to it, little girl? <laughs> if uh, you all are looking for an item, perhaps, you know, you should make your way to the market. If any items of any value are coming through Parish, that's most likely where you'd, you know, be inclined to find it. Should we go talk to... The horseman's there, because he... he yeah, he's in the so corner with the woman. Lady. Everyone make me a perception check okay, right now. Okay. I feel like the horseman would recognize the mummy. That's right, I forgot. Blaine, we've figured out, was a horse 19. girl now. Oh, right. <laughs> now. Uh, a perception? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Once a horse girl. Oh, Seven. Horse girl. Eight. Nineteen from... Uh, Catherine. That's Catherine. four for our uh, English-speaking uh, listeners. Oh. Or English-listening listeners. Um, <laughs> we actually have... You know what's funny? We have a lot um, of European listeners. Are like... Uh, b like below, like America, England, and Australia is our top listeners. It's Germany. Yeah. When I was looking at people's Spotify wrapped things of, that they were sending us, there's ones. a lot of German That's ones. That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. I bet they loved the Mud Cat episode of uh, Stinky Dragon Adventures. Oh, yeah. Ah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Hey. Sorry. We're so sorry. <laughs> we here at Stinky Dragon do terrible accents for all people. <laughs> for entertainment. Uh, someone actually commented on your Italian accent and said it was good, Gus. Was yeah. I think they were in the Discord. They said it was actually that person's lying. Actually, they, <laughs> that person's never heard of it. <laughs> No, they before. said they were Italian. They said they approve it. Gus is pinching all of his fingers. <laughs> <and they're laughs> his wrist um, we, I rolled a four. We, yeah, let's resolve yeah. that. Um, Elga, you know, while everyone's goofing around, acting like they're drunk, you can kind of make out a little bit of what the horseman and the woman are talking about. You know, they're kind of, uh, you know, they seem to be really into each other in the corner of the bar. And you hear them talking about how um, the horseman used to be a school teacher in a past life. And, you know, hey, it turns out Katrina was too. And, you know, the horseman's telling Katrina about his old schoolhouse to the northeast just outside of the city. Katrina was the one that was being uh, absconded by the frost giant? Yes. Okay. I wonder, what was the school that Hemlord was teaching at with Henry? That was oh, something college. It was B. Mm. That was back in um, different uh, Atra City. Though. Okay, yeah. but it, so it wouldn't be the same. Far, yeah. Farther okay. than what they're... Um, Definitely was in Yamford. I know that Yam much. Yamford. Maybe I it was. I about Yamford. Maybe it was. Go Yams. Really quick, before we head over to the horsemen, if we're going to do that or go to the market, I did want to ask the mummy... Actually, I asked my teammates and the mummy. Mm. Perhaps we should... Uh, do you think we should ask the mummy about Zama? Since this seems to be what Eddie is quite uh, adamantly trying to, to learn information about. I feel like we should, yeah. We should look over the mummy and maybe reconnect them with uh, the horsemen. They, they don't seem like they're in a good situation right now, so I feel like we need to help them out. Okay. God, I don't know what to ask about this because I'm still confused about the maw. But, uh, uh, mummy, do you... I know your memory seems to be a bit cloudy right now, but do you remember anything about the maw? Oh, she was very kind, very good to me when I was little. I don't think that is what I'm referencing. Mm. It was a moment where <laughs> you guys all came together and, uh, and, and combined your lands into one of a peace treaty. Hmm. But did something happen during that? Or maybe oh, it wasn't so remember. good for some people? I don't remember. My memory is so fuzzy. Elga! <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something that happened a long time ago. I'm not the first mummy. There have been many mummies. Oh, it is oh. a title. Yes. Wait, is this our mummy? But this is right, right. Or... Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, you recall <laughs> uh, right the name, the name, and she did respond to that. That's not like Blaine, like in the mall, who's lost like his mom. Is like, this is this my mummy? My mummy? Dude, my have mummy? you ever? When you're a kid, did you ever go up to the wrong mom? Most yeah. frightening thing in the world. And, and then, then you then, like, like tug on their shirt. Yeah, and, and then you look up and you're like, Gah! yeah, or yeah. You hold their hand. Primal <laughs> fear. Yeah. Uh, I, it still happens today. Um, what? No, <laughs> uh, uh, I can't remember. A while ago, there was like a thing on on a wall. It was like a map that had all the different sections. Did we take that or did we leave it? We took it. It was like the yeah, the under like the signed 
treaty thing. I think we took it. Did we take that? I don't remember what you're talking was about. The, was like, was it? it was at the office it where I think office. we locked up Weiser. Or yeah, Weezer. we locked up Weiser. It was the... Weezer. Uh, Weezer. Yeah, sorry. The, I keep thinking of the band. Uh, the werewolf. What's the, her name? So. Wolfman. Wolfman. The Wolfman. Wolfman's yeah. office, right? And there was like a map that had like all different things and it was signed and then one of them had been like changed. The Wolfman's name was in yeah. black. Right. Maybe we should check inventories. We, did, did we take that? Does anyone have I don't that? think we took it because I think it was behind glass. Oh, yeah. It was... Uh, you read it. It was in a frame and it was signed in blood. And yeah. it, so you kept it in the frame on in the, the wall. Oh, and, dang. And I think just the Wolfman's name was in black, right? It's, sorry, sorry. It's been a while. I don't have that module okay. right in front of me. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm going off my best okay. recollection. Okay. Anyway, sorry. I, yeah, it seems that the mummy is uh, experiencing a bit of memory loss in a, in a posthumous way. That's an interesting question, though, because I wonder if the mummy's name would also be... I wish we had taken it out. <laughs> like it's, oh, so like it's like a, it's a peace treaty, but that someone's using it as like a hit list. Of a hit list, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know like what that's like. I got yes. a big old notebook <laughs> so, full of names marked out. <laughs> dead. So it seems killed. like the mummy doesn't remember much. Yeah, the mummy's memory is uh, fuzzy. Okay. Hey, Matid. We oui. Not to single you out in this case. But you seem to maybe have a lot in common with the people in this pub. Is there anything you could do for people who are undead to bring their memories back? Oh, I thought it's because they're French. Uh, Dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. did, did Chip take the mummy's drink? Is Chip yeah. drunk actually now? did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, there, is, there seems to be some memory loss involved when uh, you uh, become a ghost. Uh, like I've said, I, I don't quite recall how I died. But uh, I think that uh, the mummy, uh, that paired with uh, the fact that they are uh, inebriated in some sort of way right now, I don't think we're going to get many answers from them. Was there a process... Speaking to both uh, the Dungeon Mister and Mati. <laughs> the Dungeon Mister? That's his new title. <laughs> a, re a process of recovering those memories? Were you, because you don't fully know your past. Not everything. So like, uh, okay. But I've also been, I've also been the way I am for quite a while. But also, wasn't the thing about the Karkasukans is that they reanimated? So it's like, is, are they out of their corporeal form? They're just a spirit? No, they were corporeal. In the bar. I'm no. sorry, I thought, I thought you meant in carcass But, but the it. mummy isn't now. Correct. Right. Is it because of this drink that I've been drinking? No, the mummy said was floating and is is ghost-like. Because we Correct. established at the other place that they, they reanimated, they came back there, to there life. There are There's different, different kinds, kinds of, undead. of undead. Yeah, I mean, even look in your party. Yeah. <laughs> from a metagame. No, oh, no, I, see, I see a party, I see a little girl, I see a ghost. <laughs> what am I looking for? <laughs> Okay, should we go talk to maybe the horseman? Try to get some information from over there? Yeah. Yeah. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> horseman! He kind of quickly looks up at you and then uh, turns his attention back to the woman. Um, excuse me! I couldn't help but overhear your conversation so rudely of me uh, <laughs> that you used to work at the school. Uh, we, oui, we. Oui. But then uh, he very quickly turns around uh, and begin, uh, oh. begins looking at the woman Elga again. taps him on the shoulder. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I don't like to be ignored <laughs> when I ask you a question. Can you tell me more about this school you worked at? She taps him with her axe. <laughs> <laughs> now is not a good time. Let us talk about it later. Okay, it's later now. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk up on this. Hey, Mr. Horseman. Hello, Miss Katrina. Good. Are you guys enjoying your day? Good, good, that's good. <laughs> My young friend here has some questions, and, and I also noticed that the mummy is over there. Mr. Horseman, you you may be familiar, are you not? Oh, we. Oui. So she is. I'm going to have to catch up with her later. Uh, Katrina, hello. I'm Elga. Have we met? Um, I don't believe so. Do you mind if you leave me and the Mr. Horseman to have a conversation? That's awfully rude, don't you think? We're in the middle of a conversation already. We saved your life, you know, so I think you owe the little lady a little bit of support here. Well, I'm enjoying the life that you saved. Isn't that the best thing to do? Well, you know in a video game, like, you're not supposed to do something, and it's just like, you're not, you don't... Progress. Blocking you yeah. off. You, yeah. you actually just give the same text over yeah. and over. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. We are busy right now. Please try again later. Maybe we should go where the, the bartender, the uh, what was his name? Kept, swept? Uh, wrapped. Wrapped. Kept her swept. <laughs> yeah. No, you, you had the right, you had the right, uh, uh, suffix. I knew it was like a PT. 
Yeah, that's a, that's an unusual ending to a word. And I yeah. suggest that we go look for items somewhere. Maybe we should go do that and let them finish their conversation. Really quick, you know, like because I really am worried about the mummy. We have the cart to stay Aya, or the cart cart. Yes, you had it. Yeah, is that yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Should we? And that's that's connected to someone else who has a cart to stay Aya. Not the alchemist. We don't we don't know who it is. I don't know. You keep getting messages from all kinds of people. I know. It's like it's like um yeah. Do you guys want to, like, write to them and see, like, you know, hey, we found the mummy, please advise? Sure. You wrote when you got off the train, didn't you? Yeah, uh, you did write a long note. So it's refreshing. Yeah. Battery's got to recharge. Cool down, still going. Okay, never mind. Let's just go to the market. I have almost no money whatsoever, so this should be interesting, but let's just go. Wahoo. Whippy. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe the headdress of Antique will be there. Maybe we give that to the mummy. In the market? Yeah, who knows? Yeah, and he might have pawned it. He might be low on funds. They say they get a lot of stuff there. You never know. You never know. Okay, uh, uh, Chip, could I ask a favor of you? Eddie won against the the bird, the Sphoenix, yeah? Eddie what? Eddie won against the Sphoenix. W-O-N. We did. Eddie got burned up by the Phoenix. 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 I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> and, 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 then, and then we eat... <laughs> We beat this phoenix, yes. and then Eddie came back. I wish. Oh Eddie, God, this needs to be a video podcast because people yeah. need to Eddie see Chris's back. expression okay. there. So, so Eddie probably still has the head. Where head. did Eddie come back from? Eddie came back from that like demi plane of fire. So I oh, think yeah. when the phoenix mm-hmm. burned him up, it actually just sent him somewhere. Eddie came back, Winter Soldier, the Mould, and then left yeah. after killing the Blob. I, I'm trying to keep track of like where our the the the, the weapons, the, the super weapons are. Yeah, uh, you had a favor. Take my hand. <laughs> what do you need, Brefrendo? I am I am currently unable to carry all of my belongings. <gasps> Would you mind, please? Uh, yeah. At, at this point, uh, uh, the, the effects uh, wear off. You you become your oh, okay. regular incorporeal I self. Will. Hold on to shock, Mekid, and uh, <laughs> Barney, your legs uh, reappear. Oh, there they are. Uh, I found myself. Matid does another unarmed strike at Chip, <laughs> but does like the thing where like it stops right before his face. <laughs> You should you should lean forward. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Uh, <laughs> no, um, I pick up my belongings, but I say, "Oh, would you like to carry Jacques for a little bit?" Can I roll an animal handling check to see if that works out? <laughs> yeah, 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 let's do this. Yeah, I don't know if Jacques would like to. We'll to see. Well, I chip. go out and I say, "Come here, kitty, kitty." I rolled a two. Oh no! <laughs> uh, yeah, the uh, uh, Jacques uh, arches its back and hisses, and you know does that thing like cats do, where it like strikes out very quickly with its paw, oh, like a, war- a warning. No yeah. claws, gotcha. just a warning. A little bat. Yeah, a little bat right on your nose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's right even bat. faster than Matid. Uh, you have a negative one on animal Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. It just has that thing where it goes completely like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put my hands in my pockets. It's so funny when they like arch their back and like do like that a, hopping thing. Yeah. <laughs> like when you put a cucumber down in front of a cat. Have you ever seen it <laughs> yeah. react to that? They're Look being, that up. They're being spicy. Sometimes when my cat does that to me and they pat me or they try to claw, I'll just hold my hand out and I'll let them hold it. And yeah. then we just both calm each other down. <laughs> and it's really nice. I let uh, Jacques come back into my hood and I say, good kitty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, mommy, we are heading to the store. Do you need us to pick you up anything? A headdress of antique. <laughs> we will keep our eyes out for that. <laughs> on it. Do you want to come with us, mommy? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, guys, right? We want the mummy to come with us. Yeah, let's see if they wrote this into the <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've got nothing else to do here. Okay. Okay. Hey, little stinkers. January is a super important month for us and for you, the listeners. It's Stinkuary. The show wouldn't be possible without your patronage, which is why all month long we'll be raising awareness around our subscription service called First that puts you, the audience, first. Every time someone supports Tales from the Stinky Dragon with First, they contribute to keeping the podcast going and the creation of new Stinky Dragon content. We'll be seeing how many subscribers and merch sales we can raise in the month of January so that we can do all the cool, fun stuff we want to make for you throughout the year. We'll be able to create some new awesome stuff in 2024. An exclusive mini-adventure run by John, Blaine, Barbara, or Chris. Second win for our Infinite campaign. First only exclusive merch, an Infinite campaign module. The sky is the limit. And that's just the future. First gets you immediate benefits like access to ad-free content and special subscriber content, like deep dives into the lore and player decisions of our campaign over on stinkydragonpod.com, ad-free podcast RSS feeds at stinkydragonpod.com slash RSS, exclusive Discord events at stinkydragonpod.com slash Discord, and merch discounts at stinkydragonpod.com slash store. 
That's a ton, but there's still so much more. It all culminates on a super stinky stream January 26th, where we'll be playing a special eight-hour D&D adventure live as we make our final push for subscribers and to celebrate our stinky show. This show wouldn't exist without your support, and the best way to support the show is by getting a first subscription through stinkydragonpod.com slash first or purchasing a gift sub for your friends at stinkydragonpod.com slash store starting January 1st. Looking forward to celebrating Stinkuary with you. In a tabletop and D&D world full of animations, podcasts, and live streams, Rooster Teeth invites you to experience the world of the Infinites in an incredible, unique, and hilarious fantasy adventure. The world-renowned Dungeons & Dragons podcast, Tales from the Stinky Dragon, has been reimagined into full-length puppet form. Welcome to Stinky Dragon Adventures. Follow the adventures of Bart, a bard, Gum Gum, a wizard, the archer Kyborg, and the druid Mud, who is not a prince in disguise, as they try to become heroes of their own and save the captured superhero group, the Infinites, and the realm of Faza from an unknown threat. Watch episodes of Stinky Dragon Adventures free at stinkydragonpod.com. No dice or D&D experience is necessary. Support us and the show by signing up at stinkydragonpod.com slash first and becoming a first patron. First patrons get ad-free episodes and access to exclusive bonus content like puppet, director's commentary, and more. Head over to stinkydragonpod.com to watch episodes of Stinky Dragon Adventures. Say hello to stressless holiday season with the help of HelloFresh. HelloFresh has something for everyone with over 45 recipes and 100 seasonal add-on items to choose from every week. It's also cheaper than takeout and with pre-portioned ingredients, you'll never waste money on excess food. And if you're looking to save time this holiday season, you can try their 15-minute meals that turn busy weeknights into memorable mealtimes with delicious practical options designed to save you time. Signing up is easy. All you have to do is choose your recipes, select a delivery date, and relax knowing dinner is on the way. Plus, this holiday season, you can make hosting a joy rather than a hassle with the help of HelloFresh Market. From crowd-pleasing charcuterie boards to photo-worthy desserts, it's easy to add these party pleasers to your weekly order, saving you so much time. I love HelloFresh. I just cooked some last night, actually. During the week, I try to eat vegetarian options, so I ordered vegetarian options in this box, and I had some smashed black bean tacos that were just mm, chef's kiss, outstanding. Super easy to make. Just took one pan. I was done in like... I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. It was so fast, so easy, and on top of that, really delicious. Go to HelloFresh.com slash DragonFree. Use code DRAGONFREE for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash DRAGONFREE with code DRAGONFREE. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. What are some of the easiest decisions you can make? What comes to mind for me are things like choosing the aisle seat instead of the middle seat, always saying yes when someone is offering dessert, and of course, selling with Shopify. In case you don't already know, Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify currently powers 10% of all e-commerce in the United States, as well as millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million order stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. No matter where you're selling, Shopify has you covered from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system. And once you start selling, Shopify makes getting paid simple by instantly accepting every type of payment. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash dragon. That's all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash dragon now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Once again, that is shopify.com slash dragon. Yeah, so, uh, you know, based on the, the directions that Wrapped gives you, the market is like in the northwest corner of the city. And, you know, this, this tavern where you are is mostly easterly. So it's across the other side of Parish. And a bitter wind whistles through the pale, misty streets of Parish. The journey northwest to the markets is uneventful apart from passing countless ghostly citizens every few feet. After five, ten minutes, somewhere around there, a floating stone sign comes into view that reads Marche Memorial. Uh, A turn around the corner reveals a long stretch of colorful cobblestone road bustling with bodiless buyers and vaporous vendors. Uh, Marche what? The Memorial. So the memorial walk? Market. Market. What kind of shops do we got here? You know, different kinds, all kinds of consumables. Make a wisdom check for me, Chip. Oh, I am the wisest of the group. Six. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You have a negative one on wisdom checks. (laughs) That sleight of hand, though. That was a good sleight of hand. Uh, Yeah. The first vendor you see immediately to your left is a, um, it's like a little stall selling candles. Ooh. He waves you over. Ooh, ooh. Come here. Okay. I power walk over. 
Welcome, welcome. My name's Wynel. Welcome to my, my, my little stall here. Uh, Wynel's Wax Poetic. <laughs> <laughs> good, that's good. Can I uh, interest you all in, uh, in some, of my, uh, some of my wares? And you look and there's like all little tea light candles. Oh. So these, these are all imbued with potions that can help you do different things. The candles? Yes. How, How do, do they consume? Yeah. yeah. Do you eat the candles? You light them and smell them? He looks at you like you're what from you another world, do Barney. Candles? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you light the candle and speak an incantation. Then the effect infused into the candle takes over for the duration uh, that it burns. Uh, typically about an hour. What if it, the candle goes out? The, and then the uh, effect is over. Can Don't you blow re- it. Can you relight it? You can relight it, but the effect does not uh, occur again. It's one time. Yes. What's like the, the, the price range here? Oh, well, um, we can make a deal. I think, uh, you know, but these are all, you know, like I said, imbued with magic, imbued with, uh, with uh, potions that can do various, very beneficial things. Like what? Each of these candles, you know, it's uh, they're, they're artisan, handmade, mm, mm. with, you know, fine magic. Cut to uh, the chase, yeah. They're, they're about uh, 100 gold each. Whoa. <laughs> what, what's the best you got? What's the coolest thing? Well, it depends what you're looking for. I've got four different ones available right now. What do they do? Do you have ones that could teach Bonnie how to do a kickflip? I, I don't want to do I don't want to do a kickflip. <laughs> we have here uh, a bloody nose bisque. Gross. It allows you to find traps but you get a bloody nose. Oh. But if I do oh, not have any blood. No. <laughs> I wonder if you should definitely buy this one. <laughs> a mint julep mildew. Ooh. You become resistant to necrotic damage, but you kind of reek of moldy mint leaves. Mm. Antiseptic train yard. Ooh, this one's a favorite. It allows you to bite through metal, but you have to live with the taste of it. Mm. And finally, we have decayed leaf driftwood. It allows you to cast darkness in the form of dead leaves. Oh. Yeah. That, that metal one's actually pretty rad. The metal one sounds cool. That's like a mutant power. <laughs> it's a favorite. The traps one is also pretty handy. It is. Hey, I'll, well, what do you say about a buy two, get one free, or a buy one, get one 50 free? It's like, it's like Black Friday here in, in, in Paris, yeah? The, the Black Plague has returned? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no it's okay. Uh, is there any sales? Any coupons? <laughs> mm, why don't you uh, make an offer? You got Riz. Uh, Riz them up. I do. Um, how about I buy two for 120 gold? <laughs> Whoa. Heavily discounted, but you're guaranteed a sale. I know that the markup's a little high on these. Come on, let's be real. Make a persuasion check. Persuasion. Let's see it. Can I help? Which ones are you buying? 20. Can I assist? I really want... Barney to help. I don't think you need to. He rolled a 20. Well, he rolled a 10. So it's 10 plus 10, 20. Uh, yeah, if you want to, roll a persuasion check as well, Barney. I kind of want to know how Barney 11. Helps. That was going to be my next question. I know. So Chip is up there trying to make a bargain. Barney, how do you uh, chime in? Barney shows a little I, leg. I go, Chip, we should go. These are t- they're too expensive. <laughs> That's great. Come on. <laughs> Maybe you're right, Barney. Maybe you're right. I think I saw another booth nearby. <laughs> Now that's a that's a pretty significant discount. How about two for hundred and seventy-five? I saw some other candles over there. We that saw were some there. other candles. What over are you there. guys talking about? There's no other <laughs> candles in there. Yes. This is the only place that sells candles in all of Paris. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I, I pat Elga on the head. <laughs> you're really twisting my arm here, pal. One fifty. That's my best offer. You do persuasion. Yeah, do another persuasion. Shucks. Can I help Shoot. again? 14. Parts. If you want to, Barney. Parts. A plus 10 and you rolled that. Oh, know, 25. Oh. And that 20. It sounded a bit like uh, Chip there. Oh, 25 oh, there. Yeah. Well, he's, he's emulating, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Okay, how about 160? And I'll owe you a favor. <gasps> ah. Can't put a is price a favor on. another candle? <laughs> <laughs> no, a favor is not a candle. Can't put a price on favors. Ah, yeah, got yourself a deal. Uh, okay. What two are you gonna get? Yeah, what, what I, two I was do you gonna want? say if somebody wanted, I could, I could, we could split and do 80. 80. I want a metal one. I okay. Think Barney's uh, hungry. He wants to. Uh, we'll take uh, the metal eaten one, and the trap one. The, the trap one. Okay. One bloody nose bisque and one antiseptic train yard. So don't forget, you must light it, and then speak an incantation, and then the effect will take over for the duration of the candle burning. Okay which is about approximately one hour, and it affects everyone that can smell it within five feet. Oh, oh, that's great. Didn't know that. So your incantation must be, and this is very important, 
It must be in the form of a haiku. Oh. 353. 575. I love the confidence. <laughs> I've, been, I've been playing Ghost of Tsushima, so I'm like really like. <laughs> but clearly not, not enough. enough. <laughs> not enough. So that goes five seven five. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to do you want to remove eighty? Yes. Oh, about that favor. What do you got to offer? I don't know. What do you need? Is there something I can help you with? It, it makes sense that Chip will be looking for his wife. But is there another more pertinent mission thing that we need to lean into it? Yeah. Do what you want. Do what you got to. Ah, uh, pull up a picture of Carol. This is my wife. Have you seen her? Her name's Carol. Oh, she's a fiery tiefling. Her blades as fast as lightning her tongue as sharp as those blades okay. that are as fast as lightning <laughs> uh her fighting prowess unmatched her beauty without question shall i continue do you want to hear more about carol <laughs> this is I'm, I'm, I'm loving the world building <laughs> can't say i have we don't get many first of all we don't get many corporeal people and then secondly not many tieflings either mm. so I, I i feel like she would stand out so I've not I've not seen her unfortunately. Okay. Well, if you do see her, can you give her a note for me? A kiss from you. Got it. No, no. I'll type you. I'll write you a note real quick. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Actually, do you have pen and paper, sir? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Quill and paper. All right. Here you go. You ready? I'm gonna write you a letter. Okay. And I okay. need you to give it to my wife Carol if you run across her. Okay. 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 All right. Here, here, here. To, to my dearest, my dearest Carol. Carol, it is it Chip. Is How, How are, are you? you? I miss, miss you, you. So, 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 so much. <laughs> it's seven so's. I got it. Mm -hmm. uh, I am still I am looking, still for, looking you. for you. I, I would like to go home. home. <laughs> we, have we have friends. friends. We oh, can is, there have over is there a question mark on that? We have... That's an exclamation point. Okay. Yeah. 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 We, uh, we should we, invite, we should invite them, them over for dinner. For dinner. I think I one wants to drink my blood. My blood. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think he's writing any of this down. Please come home, come home or, oh, you know, beat me. <laughs> beat me? He yeah. looks at you with uh, concern. Yeah, no, it's fine. She'll, she'll get it. She'll okay, get it. okay. Uh, from, from your loving your husband, husband, Chip Haney. Chip H A N E Y? Yes. All right, now read it back to me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so. <laughs> Got it. If I see uh, uh, Carol, I'll be sure to uh, give that to her. Okay, great. foolproof plan. When we run across Carol, <laughs> like, I have this letter. I have this letter. <laughs> Is her name Carol Haney? Did she take your name? There was a hyphen. Okay. What was it hyphenated oh. with? Carol. Carol Haney Knee. No. What's Carol's last name? Burnett. Give me something. No. <laughs> is, is Carol Burnett a thing? Yeah, that's, a, that's a real person. Oh uh, O'Connor? Stop. <laughs> Carol. Oh, improvisation is hard. It's okay. Uh, they can cut this all out. Carol Kino. I'm looking at a Kino light. That's all I got. Carol Haney Kino. Carol Kino Haney. Carol, Her Carol Kino Haney. K I N O or K E E N O? <laughs> just how, K I N O. You can spell it however you want. K E N O. Kino. Okay. okay. Keno. Sure. Okay. Got I it. like it. I like it. I think it's K I N O, isn't it? Okay, it's yeah. fine. It, this is not the yeah. light. This yeah. is Carol. I'm just Carol. answering his question because he was curious. Is Carol Kino is that a cool name? I like it. That's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. If I met Carol Kino, be Carol Kino Haney. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's uh, it, it's lore now. <laughs> oh, also, by the way, don't cut any of that out. I want you to leave every moment of that in. <laughs> the mummy stumbles up to Wynal and says, uh, Yes, any headdresses for sale? <laughs> Wynal looks at her a little confused and goes, No, I just sell candles, but... Is there an aberdashery somewhere? No, but Alehound uh, knows someone who sold the headdress recently. Oh, oh. Allah Hound? Yeah. He's right over there. Wynal points to another stall just a little down the way. I head over. Head over. <laughs> okay, mommy, let's go this way. And don't ask candle makers if they have your headdress anymore. All right, you all uh, follow over to uh, the next stall. And this, you know, has a little sign that says, Allah Hound's Loot Loot. Allah Hound's Loot Loot. Loot Loot? Yeah. You like musical? Yeah, L-U-T-E-L-O-O-T. I'm on to you. 
Welcome, welcome. Uh, uh, are you all interested in magical musical instruments? Okay. Anyone can play them, um, each casting a unique cantrip. Okay. Cantrips are good. Before you tell us about them, do you know if there's a headdress floating around? Oh, I do. And in fact, I know who sold it. Yeah. Do tell, pray tell. Well, you know, maybe if someone bought something, it would help me remember. Oh, tell us more about these instruments and what they do. Oh, of course. Uh, right away, sir. We have castanets of coolness. Mm. Oh, those are cool. Harmonica of hotness. Ooh. Recorder of rapping. Oh, like Ooh, and safe. the triangle of toughness. Mm. Oh, what do they each do? These are all the instruments you hand out to five-year-olds <laughs> at <Yeah>. kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it makes sense. <laughs> your significant other wants to join your band, but they don't know how to play an instrument. Yeah, Here's yeah, yeah. these. Yeah, Here's anyone triangle. can play them. No, no, it's, it, no barrier to entry. You see, I wish before that I had passed that I had attended more concerts, so I'm just trying to make sure that there's more music in the world for everyone to enjoy. That's a lovely sentiment. Uh, what can trips do these uh, cast? So the castanets of coolness <laughs> casts friends. But you have to make up a secret handshake with your new friend and describe it in detail. Okay. Oh. Friends is a good spell. The harmonica of hotness casts produce flame with blue fire. But all you can say while concentrating is, I've got the blues in a gravelly tone. Mm. I've got that blues. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. Elka gravelly is the best. <laughs> the recorder of rapping allows you to cast message, but the message has to be in the form of a rap. If the recipient responds, the caster must beatbox to their response. That's, <laughs> this is, these are great. These are so specific. <laughs> and finally, the triangle of toughness casts resistance, but you have to do a chest bump with the nearest creature every round you are concentrating. Resistance to what? So resistance is just a spell in D and D, and what it does is you roll a D four, and at the number you roll to a saving throw of your choice. Oh. So it's just a way to like bolster some kind of saving throw that you. Okay. Have. So if you roll a four, you get four saving throws. Wait, wait, wait. No, you it? you add four. So like, let's Got say you roll a ten, then it becomes a fourteen. Okay. I like the castanet. The castanets are very cool. I think we would definitely want to buy some of your instruments in exchange for also information. How much for the castanets? We have a special today. Everything's half off. All of our instruments are 50 gold each. I want the whole instrument. <laughs> I get it. 50% off. Oh, not half of it. <laughs> okay, that really got me. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> I, thought, I thought he was pulling a Harry Potter on the on the Hogwarts Express. No. <laughs> for you, uh, you'll get the entire instrument at only the price of half an instrument. Oh, okay. That sounds great. Question. You get both cast nets. What is there any difference between because you specified blue fire for the harmonica of hotness? Uh huh. What's the significance of that versus like just because you got fire? the blues? Um, <laughs> but it, like it has the same effect yeah, of exactly. Normal. The same. Okay. It's just blue fire instead of <laughs> orange red. I think I want the harmonica. <laughs> Harmonica. <laughs> harmonica. Globally. <laughs> I think I want the harmonica. <laughs> Ooh, that's, uh, it can be yours for only 50 gold. Okay, here you go. Ooh, great. Is, is there ones that you I guys wanted you to get? 50 before? gold. I was going to take the harmonica. That's, that's oh. no, it was only because I was going to try to get it off the streets because fire is a danger. Don't but worry. in Elga's hands. I keep good handle on it. Yeah, I should take good handle on it. So I'm good. I don't, there's nothing that really I like me. either the wrapping one or the friends one. I think are fun. I don't think I need the casting. It's a cooling, but the wrapping. The one... wrapping one just sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, it does. Okay, get those and I'll get the triangle. The, the benefit of the I'll wrapping the one is you, uh, if you were like sneaking, you could send messages. But then you have to beatbox. That's true. Do you want the triangle? I picture toughness? like two orcs and one was like, "Do you hear something?" <laughs> I, I swear I do. <laughs> I'll take the triangle. Yeah. All right. I guess I'll get the wrapping one just because. I think it'll be funny. There you go. An entire recorder for a price of half a recorder. That's 25. Nope. 50 gold. Oh, you, <laughs> said, you said 50. Normally it's half. 100. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Your, hey, your Chris is showing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the, the castanets of cooling, then. Castanets of coolness. That's, sorry. Thinking of like a refreshing shower. <laughs> and I take the triangle of the toughness. Ooh. <laughs> Alejandro makes uh, all the transactions with everyone and says, Ooh, okay, thank you, thank you so much. If you're looking for a, a headdress, you're going to want to go to the next stall over to Subangelus. What was the thing I had to do with Triangle of Toughness to do it? You have to do a chest, chest bump. bump. Lovely. Subangelus, here, right next door. She'll be able to help you out. 
Okay. Uh, I just take a side step to uh, what was it? Shavangelis. Subangelis. Subangelis. It's the underground part of Los Angeles. And yeah, that, Subangelis. There's a sign here that says Subangelis's Sleepy Time Sands. That's fun. What do you sell? Yeah. Bienvenue. And this sign says, I sell Sleepy Time Sands. You sprinkle it on a wheel and crystals, eyes, and they fall into a restorative slumber. Side effects may include ear splitting snoring. Uh oh. oh. Uh, Tip already has ear splitting <laughs> snoring. So uh, 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 sorry, sorry. They sleep for one minute and gain the benefit of a short rest and receive one spell slot or one feature charge. Ooh. Oh. It's like a key point, channel divinity, oh, luck okay. point, rain, rage. How much for the sand? One dose is 100 gold. Whoa. And uh, she holds up a small pouch of sand. I mean, it is pretty useful. Sure. For when you don't have a lot of time, but you need a lot of rest. Yeah, this would be helpful. So it's like it's like a short, it's a long rest. Short, short rest. Short, short rest. rest. In one minute. In one minute. And often I find ourselves uh, against the clock and wishing for a short yeah. or a long rest. Be like good for like a... Get some HP. Warlock. I feel like a lot of my stuff only... Like comes back after a long rest, so yeah. it's not as yeah. You would get one rage back. Oh, I would. Okay. Yeah. Can't you get some hit dice with a short rest? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and you can get some hit dice. So back. it's like a heal as well. And you said it's a hundred gold. Yes. I'll take a dose. I'll take a dose as well. Yeah, yeah, go. I think I'm gonna pass on this one because I don't know that other than HP, I get much, and we have so many healers on the team. Or we got what? Barney. Sorry, we got Barney. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> we have one. <laughs> <laughs> we 25% of our team is healers. That's a lot. That's a significant amount. Oh, man. So who, who's who's taking on? Uh, Elga and Matid? Yes, we. And you get back a spell slot and a short rest? Correct. So you get short rest and spell slot or one feature charge. It would be like your channel divinity. Your channel divinity would be yours. You'd get that back. Lucky is also one. You get a lucky point back. I guess I'll get one. All right, so 100 gold. Okay. I end over the 100 gold. And uh, none for you, Chip, right? Ah, no, I passed. Okay, I, can't so. wait for, I can't wait for the smash cut in three episodes when you regret not I having one of I wish I had an extra lucky. <laughs> no, lucky only resets at your long rest. That's why I'm like... No, this, this is this, in the this thing. This will reset one. It gives you one back. One lucky for 100? Look, don't it's do it. I, I need you not yeah. to buy it now. We, now we, I need you we, not we to buy it. We, we, I can't wait <laughs> for the comedy later when this bites you in the butt. I want to plant the seed of frustration for later. Chip is always chipper, but right now he's like, no! <laughs> I don't want it! I don't want this. No, sand. thank you! <laughs> and it's just a one time use, yeah. Correct. Okay. So, yeah, Subangelus completes the transaction and says, The person who purchased the address is Ragnar, the owner of Artisan Arava. Ragnar? It's on the other side of town, to the southeast. And is this the legit headdress of Antique, or is this like a knockoff? As far as I know, I am but a specialist in uh. sand, and since I import most of my sand from Kakasuk, it looked like the headdress to me. It's everywhere. Did you letter in sand in school? How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> the letter was it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know the spell Sling of the Sandstorms? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, not familiar. So, and they, the, that, that other shop is very close by? Uh, other no, it's to the town. southeast, other side of town. Oh, I got it, got it. Well, shall we? Let's go. Are there, any other, are there any other booths or anything of interest in, in this marketplace? Yeah, the market is quite expansive. I mean, it goes on quite a ways. It seems to, like, snake around, around, you know, corners and branch off in different directions. Let's well, spend three episodes here. <laughs> 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 we got so much money. Is there any weapons? Like, looking around, can I survey, are there any more, like, decent things that apply to well, our Decent group? is very subjective, don't you think? Uh, like, things that will improve our combat prowess in a significant way. Or is it just, like, tchotchkes? Do you verbalize this, or is this something you're just thinking and talking about in metagame? I guess I'm just looking around, perceiving. He's Make a it. perception He's check. It. He's perceiving. I love it. It's fun every time. Just gonna mark that on my bingo card LA, for this episode. Man. Nothing stands out. It's a lot of uh, incorporeal things and uh, strange things that you don't you don't know what they're for. Is there any gift shop? Like consumables. Is uh, you see a lot of consumables here. You want a gift shop? Hey, you want like a shot glass or a magnet? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. I'll buy them for you know Carol Kino. Put them hey. in your bum bag. Yeah, I, I've been. Kino. I'm I'm still collecting things from around the world on our travels. I can't wait till we learn Carol's middle name. Oh. 
Karate. <laughs> Carol Karate, Karate Keene. Actually, no, because it should be true. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, danger. 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 Her middle name is Danger. <laughs> Matid, would you be interested in translating the name of Artisan Au Revoir for your, uh, your party? Artisan Au Revoir as in the, the goodbye artisan? Goodbye craftsman. Craftsman. Art, artisan. Mm -hmm. Artisan. Mm -hmm. Goodbye craftsman? Yeah. Let's go to the goodbye craftsman. Good Almost like her. someone who crafts things. What? This might, it might be I'm what you might be blame. looking for. Oh, your eye. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dungeon mister's giving me all your luck. <laughs> Gus needs to weep louder so that our wink, audio listeners wink. can. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, let's go to that. Really quick. Sorry, I don't want to waste time. Just no, no. grab a little, little. Let's do it. I grab Chip and we fly there immediately. <laughs> I'm keep posing. <laughs> what is he called? Chipmunking? The chipmunk. Chip Barney, monk. are you flying after them? Barney runs. The chipmunk special. Elga skips behind them. I love being in Paris. <laughs> uh, once again, bristling breeze slowly drifts along the hazy avenues. The journey southeast to the artisan takes a bit longer than before, passing by haunted homes and more notably the central mausoleum made of alabaster stone and columned porticos. Uh, after about, mm, let's say, 15, 20 minutes, a tin-roofed forge almost materializes amidst the mist. The building seemingly a patchwork of various materials and a floating armored sign reads artisan au revoir you said it appeared it made me think of like when you're playing a video game and it renders the yeah. building <laughs> like, the, yeah. like the fog is in the distance yeah, to stop yeah, you yeah. everything and then you, yeah. it pops in minus a half point for pop-up okay uh i enter well like once again there's no doors only yeah, windows i enter okay mati just frown i tuck my legs as we as i enter with mati so they're still carrying Mateed me. Mateed goes through, and Barney and Chip doesn't. Yeah, it's like Chip hits the bottom of the window still. <laughs> yeah, okay, great. Uh, yeah, you go inside, and you find a goblin ghost hammering away at a suit of armor that appears to be made of shiny glass or some kind of translucent material. Mm. He looks up as you enter. Bonjour. Oh, hello. I'm here for a headpiece. Headdress. Ed, what is it? Headdress. 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 You want me to make a headdress? Okay. Nope. I would like to buy ones that is already made. You procured it from the Sandman. Exit light. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. That's right. What was her name again? Enter night. I do not remember. Something, something, uh, sub, sub, sub Angelus. Oh, that's I've right. got it. Sub Angelus. I've got your number. That's right. I appreciate rare craft work and fine materials. This address did cost me quite a bit. Perhaps I could be persuaded to part with it if you and your friends hired me for some of my services. What do you do? Well, I'm a perfectionist, and I like to take existing items, perfect the flaws, and make them even better. Oh. For example, for you, I could fix that armor of yours and make it even better. My armor? That's right. Well, I didn't know it was broken. Could you just fix Barney in general? <laughs> <laughs> what would you do to it? How much was that? <laughs> He, he begins walking around and puts like a, a little loop up to his eye, inspecting Barney's armor, you know, very finely. Hmm, I could perhaps change this material, add some reinforcement, make it really sturdy and durable, and imbue it with some advantages for you. Perhaps it could give you some resistance to necrotic damage, oh. some bonuses to your friends, to any saving throws they may make, and maybe the ability to emit a burst of sun and moonbeams. You had me at. Resistance to necrotic. <laughs> How much? Hmm. What do you think uh, something like that would be worth to you? Mm -mm. This will be rich. What gold? What gold? Well, 50 gold? Hmm. That is wow. What a deal. Oh. So good. Missed your money bags. I don't know if that will cover the materials. How about we say 120? Oh. Not bad. Mm. How about we meet in the middle at 100? At the middle? I just, I just go with it. <laughs> the middle in your favor. Don't ask. Closer to your... Sure. Why not? We can make that work just because it will be such a joy to work on this armor. That's plate armor. What can you do to me? Let's see. Perhaps I could imbue some magics into your shawl. Okay, what kind of magics? And I would call it more of a cape than a shawl because <laughs> tomato, tomato. Yeah, to each their own. To me, it looks like a shawl. But to you, it might be a cape. We could imbue it with the ability to give you an advantage when you 
try to intimidate others. As if I need it. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps when a foe hits you with an attack, you could use a reaction to cause them to take damage equal to the damage you took. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. I like that. And finally, if you're angry and in a bad mood and you strike someone, you can expend a stored up charge and strike fear right into them. That's good. Oh, that's also good. Can I get all three? Of course I could imbue all three of those. Okay. We'll call it 150 gold. You know, I think it's worth the price. I'll give you that. Excellent. Your shawl will be the shawl of Sanguine. I put Jacques on the counter and say, what can you do to this cat? <laughs> He's already perfect. We want battle cat. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen He-Man? <laughs> that. Um, my specialty tends to be with inanimate objects. I put a muffin on the counter. All right, upgrade that. <laughs> okay. Huh. A muffin. Perhaps, yeah, we can imbue some special abilities into this muffin. Maybe if you eat the muffin, you can regain key points since you are a monk, equal to your martial arts die. Can I do a consumable versus, like, armor? No, I'm seeing what he's got. We can also have it increase your constitution score. Permanently or, or temporarily? Permanently. Okay. And after you successfully strike someone, you can choose to gain advantage on an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw before the end of your next turn. Ooh, I like this. He's a good muffin. And the muffin will magically reappear in your inventory at dawn every day. That's, That's a very special muffin. I shall call it the muffin of stardust. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's a good name. I like this so much. I, I put eight muffins on the counter. I say, I'm great them all. <laughs> I can do one. But it will come back every day. Okay. How much for this special muffin? 150 gold. Hmm. Price is comparable to your bakery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? I, I think this is fine. This is, this is okay. With okay, me. great. And what about you, young tiefling? I look around. Oh, point, pointing at you. Oh, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you, uh, what do you got? Perhaps I can work on those shoes of yours. <gasps> My sneakers? Oh. Yeah. What can you do? We can imbue them with the ability to give you an advantage on stealth oh, checks. Magic give you an extra 10 feet of movement wow. speed. Wow. Go on. And we can give them charges so that when you fail a dexterity throw. Which is often. You can use a reaction to succeed on it instead. That sounds, that sounds. And the charges will come back daily. Much like the muffin. Ah, oh, special muffin shoes. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Well, what's, what's the damage there, pal? 150 gold. What if I pay you 150 and you get me like a cute little trinket to bring home to the wife, huh? I could find something for that, sure. What do you got? I can put a little dagger trinket onto your sneakers. Okay. Yeah, 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 sure. I'll call it my croc charm. Croc charm. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> uh, who am I question to? Who am I to question a great deal? One hundred fifty, you said. Yeah, I'll call you new shoes. The sneakers of lost souls. Spooky. S O L E S. You get it? You see what I did there? Eh? Eh? Ooh. My my abilities are called silent but deadly, swift sneaking, and sidestep of second chances. That's fun. That's uh, that's all Micah. It's great. Uh, all, mine are all S's too. Um, I noticed, too, that I need to tell a joke to attune my shawl. Oh. Should I do that yeah. as a sucky joke? Oh, uh, like a vampire joke? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It. Or just a sucky joke. So, do you know what kind of, what, what do you call a, a lotion that sucks at its job? A lotion that sucks at its job? A notion? A disappointment. Ointment. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's Boo. good. Elga, you comedian. Is it a tune? It's a tune. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so pleased with herself. It doesn't tell me how to tune these. Especially at the top. Mine is, uh, I got to do a perform an aerial dance routine. Ooh. We're in for a treat. I do a dance right now. Wow. Make a performance check. Of course. My teeth, my teeth, my teeth. I am teeth. light on my wings. My teeth, do it. Performance. I roll a 12. It's okay. It's nothing special. I use inspiration okay. dice. This means something to me. What if you get something lower? I hope not. Please, come on. Give me good. 19. Oh. Whoa. 
You ever seen a bird dance with a muffin? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the HEB parking lot and there's a grackle attacking <laughs> some like big bird that I've been through. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful dance between bird and uh, muffin or aracochran and muffin. Sneakers of Lost Souls require attunement by a rogue that most successfully sneaks up on three allies without their noticing. I'm going to attempt to do that. I guess three stealth checks. Oh, you got to do it yeah. to us? Who, who, who you got to call them out, though, first. Who's your first one on? Uh, Mateed, while they're distracted with their cool dance. You make a stealth check? With advantage, apparently, because I have an A next to it. Is that right? It's because the sneakers give you the advantage, uh -huh. so you don't have that advantage yet because they're not attuned. Got to earn it. What okay. do I do to counter You make it? a perception check. That's 26. I can do this. Good luck, bird. 19. Oh, yeah, you successfully sneak up on Mateed okay. while he's distracted playing with they. his muffin. And oh, sorry, while well, they are distracted playing with their muffin. And I deposit one silver into their pocket. One silver? <laughs> I'll take it. All right, who's next? Who's your next target? And then after that, I'm going to go for old Barney. And I do a... And that's a 20. Barney, make a perception check. Nine. <laughs> Barney doesn't know that he's in the same room with you. Suddenly, Barney gets one silver in their pocket. What a kind thief you are. And then I move on to little Elga. Hello, Chip. No, you don't know I'm here. Uh, Hopefully you don't know. <laughs> That's a 18. Elga, make a perception check. You're going to break it. Break it. Do I have break advantage it. on this? Break no. it. Break it. Oh, 10. Oh. <laughs> It all gets, gets two silver. <laughs> you are now attuned with your sneakers of lost souls. The tooth fairy came to pay me a visit. I moonwalk. They're silent. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. And uh, after, you know, giving you all your upgraded items, Ragnar says, Oh, one moment. And, uh, you know, he uh, gets a ladder, climbs up to a very tall shelf in his workshop, and pulls down uh, an item covered with a piece of cloth. Uh, and it takes the cloth off and reveals the headdress of Antique. Ooh. Could we ask the mummy if this is the real one? Uh, yeah. Oh, actually, before you even have a chance to do that, the mummy reaches out and, uh, you know, takes it into her hands. And then she, well, she puts it on top of her head. And it seems like you see a change in her face. You know, as soon as the headdress fits atop her head, the mummy's eyes flash like golden sand. Though still a ghost, her face seems to regain some color as well. And she looks at you all with a gentle smile. My friends... It is good to recognize your faces once more. Oh. Thank you for restoring both my memories and my queendom. I have good news and grave news. Uh-oh. Good news is I remember where I last saw the alchemist. Here, in the city. Where? The bad news is I hope I'm wrong. Uh-oh. Quickly, we should make haste northward to the river. The mummy nods to Ragnar and swiftly phases through the wall back outside. I do too. This is fun. I run full speed into that wall. <laughs> <laughs> How much damage do you take? Who's gonna weekend too? Uh, is there a door outside of this place? No. I ju I climb, jump through the window. I crawl through the hole, the Kool Aid Man hole that, <laughs> that, that ship leaves. Ship left. <laughs> well, let's see if he leaves the hole. He does not leave a hole. Or else you're just running into the back <laughs> of the ship. So the mummy rapidly leads the way northward past the alabaster mausoleum. After 15 minutes, the soft babbling of flowing water echoes down the street and braying of horses fills the air. The mummy floats right past a fortified building with stables straight toward a dilapidated cobblestone bridge. The river below it flows with sickly green water. Two spectered horsemen dressed in gray uniforms swiftly gallop out from the stables and block the path. And they give everyone a stern look. That is far enough. This bridge is off limits to civilians. No one may go beyond the Riviere Vivant. It is for your own safety. What, what's why? What's it's dangerous? On the other side is La Covenord. What, what, what? And, and why is that dangerous? It's an awful land ruled by the Coven. Oh, like yeah. witches? Yeah, maybe. We. Oui. And why are they so... Hags. Uh, why are they... Oh, 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 oh. No need to call women this. Language. They have waged a cold war over Parisian territory for years. Like like what's, what's some of the things that have happened? Give us a little history lesson. They left the bag of poop and oh, then oh. lit it on fire on our door. <laughs> That's pretty fucking <laughs> And then like they knocked on the door. <laughs> oh, and, and then what happened? 
We tried to stomp it to help. Yeah. And we got poop on our shoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's, That's so inexcusable. That's so juvenile. Uh, I don't know. I, I <laughs> That's love obviously it. not in the mind. <laughs> <I'm> sorry, <laughs> You can tell how long it's been since Gus, like, did pranks or anything. Great <laughs> writing, uh, Micah. That's awesome writing. <laughs> uh, yeah, good job. <laughs> Are y'all at war with him? Or just they're mean to you? Uh, a cold war. I bet it was so, uh, Okay. <laughs> What was the genesis of this? Was it the poop bag? Who started Is that what started it? this whole thing? <laughs> the, the, the poop heard around the world. <laughs> so they've just been mean to you and you're mean to them? Ooh, oui. Okay. Have you ever tried talking to them? No, it is very dangerous. What if we did it for you? We're not Parisi Parisians. We got so, no skin in this so game. We, could, we yeah. could go and maybe buy... You know what? Chip here has some gross poops. Then we can give him a big poop bag. I think we should get off the poop I situation. Think I think so too. <laughs> we, we could go as representatives, a, a, a neutral third party, and broker a piece. How does that sound? Mm. Mm. Barney and Chip, both of you make persuasion checks here. 17. 15. The two of them kind of uh, whisper to each other a little bit, have a back and forth. Since, uh, I'll say Elga and Matid, since you all didn't make persuasion checks, I want you two to make me perception checks. Okie dokie. It's 11. Six. Is that what you wanted, Gus? And, I mean, it's, it's whatever you roll. It's not what I want or not. Elga, you know, while everyone else is talking, you know, you're kind of looking at the riders. And you see that they're, you know, they're wearing gray uniforms and they have a sigil on the sleeve. It looks like a jack-o'-lantern carved with a U-shaped horseshoe. Hmm. Hmm. The, the two of them, uh, after they whisper to each other for a little while. And these are the people who brought us here? No, they're blocking the road. Blocking the road. Yeah. They say, okay, you can go, but be warned. The coven curse people and have taken over parts of Parish, so be very careful. Also, thank you for your help with the frost giant. We know you are very capable. I say, uh, you betcha. And well, remind me of your names again. I am Lieutenant Oriana. Ah, okay. How about you, little one? Je m'appelle Sergeant Leozard. Ah, Oriana and Leozard. Hey, we're going to do the best that we can to, to make sure that there's peace in this land, eh? Okay. Okay. So they uh, they step aside and let you all cross. Yeah, let's do it. And are, who, are we still with the mummy yeah. and anyone else? No, just the mummy. And the mummy says, Hurry, we must cross the river quickly in order to find the alchemist. Okay. Okay. Let's start crossing. Allons-y. Can, can I actually ask the mummy a question now that they're back to their senses? Yeah. Mummy, when we ran into you, you're in the bar, you're going through a hard time, and we tried to get, like, the horseman to help us out. What's, what's like, your relationship like with the horseman? You guys on good terms? It's fine. No animosity. Ah, okay. He's just enamored with Katrina. He was just on a date. He's just on a date. Okay, that's all. I don't blame him. Oh, it's... Like what happened at Zama? I like the mummy. What happened? What uh, I want to know. You have your memories back. What happened at Zama? I wasn't there. That happened long oh, before my time. That's... That was a mummy from the past. <laughs> one of my ancestors. Great, great grand mummy. <laughs> As you all grand are crossing mummy. here, I want everyone to roll me a d20. Okay. That's not scary. That'll be fine. Highest roll gets to live. 19. 6. 5. 8. I live! <laughs> Please do a little dance. Yeah. <laughs> the lower the roll, the better. Right? Yeah. Typically, that's the way D&D &D normally works. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone except for Chip takes four points of force damage. What? what? And gets, like, knocked back a little bit. Oh. Can we tell, like, where it came from or what it is? Seems like some kind of maybe... Like a force field? Yeah, magical barrier here. As we cross the bridge? Right. It, it, it doesn't knock, knock you back across the bridge. It kind of, like, knocks you down on your butt. You know, it's kind of, like, boom. You know, knocks you off your feet a little bit. Oh, Chip goes but, and helps everybody yeah, up. Chip is fine. Come here, Barney. Get to your feet. Come on, big man. Ouch. Thank you. Uh, try again to cross the bridge. Yeah, you try to cross over again, Matid, and it, you feel, once again, like, there's something there stopping you. It seems like uh, only Chip is able to go back and forth right now. I just wave. Hello. <laughs> what makes him so special? You know, as you all are looking at this and, you know, wondering, fire resistance, suddenly Jacques yells at something behind you. Uh, on the corner street, you see a skeletal dog wagging its bony tail. And Jacques hisses at the hound and lunges after it. And the two creatures take off down the street heading south. The opposite direction of the bridge? <laughs> yeah. 
And the mummy, not again. The mummy seems quite surprised and says, Well, what are we waiting for? You should follow the feline at once. As the ancient proverb denotes, cats know what they are doing. And the mummy speedily gives pursuit after the animals. So do I. Okay, let's go. I do too, but I get on all fours. Because it's like the animals. Okay. The wintry wind whistles all around while rushing down the streets of Parrish. Turn after turn, the mummy leads away, following Jacques and the dog down alleyways and zipping past the familiar mausoleum, all the time heading south. Without warning, a wall blocks the path, but the mummy phases right through it to the other side. It must be the southern border of the city. A quick look around reveals a few loose pieces in the stonework to climb through. On the other side is the mummy floating stiffly in place, and beyond her are miles and miles of foggy fields overcrowded with graves and tombstones. Jacques has stopped chasing the skeletal hound, which is now sitting near one particular grave. The tombstone is covered with webs and lettering is faded, but the epitaph chills everyone to their core. R.I.P. Barnabas Farney. <gasps> what? What did you do? Is that you? Your whole name is Barnabas? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's the shock. That's the thing you're surprised about. Someone with the exact same name as me? That's that's crazy. Uh... Do have the year on it? We'll find out. We'll the find next out. Episode oh, of Thanks for listening, everybody. This was a fun one. There was a lot to to, to digest and get through in this, this episode. Yeah. yeah. God, we're getting lots of Barney lore. We learn about Kino. Miss yeah. Kino. Yeah. <laughs> Barney looked like what was that? <laughs> yeah. We forgot what that Carol was. Carol Kino. Carol that's Danger so, that's, Kino. That's I would go to a concert for Carol Kino. <laughs> that's a cool name. That's a cool name. K E N O. All right, well, uh, we'll be back next week with another episode. And don't forget, uh, next month, in a couple weeks from now, uh, we're going to kick off Stinkuary. Stinkuary's coming. look for more coming. information on that at Stinky Dragon Pod on social media. Tell your mom, tell your dog, tell your neighbor, tell your mailman. It's a sacred month. And yes. everyone celebrates. If you, uh, we referenced several times the Cat Mud episode uh, mm-hmm. of Stinky Dragon Adventures. That is out for free at stinkydragonpod.com. Yeah. Well. yeah. So if you're wondering what that is, go, go watch check it. it out. Yeah. All right, thanks for listening. Bye. 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 Did you know you can directly support the show by subscribing at stinkydragonpod.com slash first? You could join the ranks of amazing little stinkers like Bevan B, Ewalina, RightBip80, Vibin, Silocybin, and Uncle Cousin. That one's a little confusing. These people are directly supporting the show and getting access to more great content like Second Wind. They can interact with us on subscriber-only Discord channels and events and more. Uh, again, that's stinkydragonpod.com slash first. We cannot thank you enough for the support that allows us to make this show. Listeners who interact with us on social media and Discord had NPCs named after them in this episode, like Ryder Rajad, aka The Mummy, named after user Ryder 7 s who's voiced by Hannah McCarthy, at Hi Hello Hannah. Ragnar, the Goblin Artisan, First Patron, Commander N7, voiced by Jeff Yetter. Wynal, the Candle Craftsman, named after First Patron, Poke Inspired. Subangelus, the Sleepy Sand Seller, First Patron, Subangelus, but you couldn't have guessed that one, voiced by Micah Reisinger. Alejandro, the musical merchant, named after first patron Lon Soon. Lieutenant Oriana, the cavalry rider, named after first patron Caro Ali or Caro. Sergeant Leozard, the cavalry rider at Laser Lizard on Twitter, voiced by Micah Reisinger. Additionally, the Headless Horseman is voiced by Jacob Fullerton at underscore Jacob Fullerton. The Stinky Dragon channel is managed by Ben Ernst. This episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon was produced by Kai Cook, written, edited, and composed by Michael Reisinger with additional editing work by David Sanye. Head on over to stinkydragonpod.com slash first for all things stinky, and tune in next time for another thrilling episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. One of those new, like, new cocktail experiences yeah. where you inhale the vodka. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. You ever done something like that? No. They have. They have. I like, know they you exist. Ever done something like that? <laughs> <laughs> Your Texas is showing. <laughs> <There's> like. <laughs>